I had a really great physics teacher in high school of all places. He asked each of the students to take an, a radio out of the trash can and take all the parts and put them on the schematic and make the radio work. And that just got me going. From the time he was very, very young, Mike loved order. He loved to be able to take a giant problem and break it into its component parts. And to track his career is kind of to track some of the most innovative companies around at the time he was working. Hughes, Fairchild, Intel, Apple, Echelon. I was on the board of Intel Corporation and Mike made presentations to the board and that's how I got to know him. When I went to work there, I had asked for a very large stock option. And because of that, I think I was around 32 when I retired. I spent a lot of time playing tennis and skiing and building furniture in my garage, but I kind of missed the interaction with people who were trying to get something done and they got fire in their belly. And then I got a call from a fellow by the name of Don Valentine, and he said, I've been over to see these guys. He, he says, you're just what they need. <laughs> so I called up the number that he gave me, and uh, Steve Jobs answered the phone. I was impressed at how he had retired, but he was still very young, youthful. Waz was over in the corner of the garage, and he had what in essence was the Apple II already built. And uh, he was testing high-res color graphics. And I went, okay. Mike understood it and appreciated it. And he said that he had a feeling this was going to be the next big revolution. I was just blown away. I thought it was a marvelous piece of engineering. He sent the two Steves, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, up to my office to uh, meet with me. And uh, I was not impressed. I was naive. I knew nothing about business, knew nothing about investment. Mike saw a future that I don't think anyone else was able to see at that time. The big computer companies of the world didn't see the market. The only reason I made the investment was because Mike was going to uh, own a third of the company. And I thought Mike could be a pretty good uh, manager. And it turned out that was correct. Mike sat down early on and he told Steve and myself, here are the positions you have to hire. Here is how a company works, a tech company. Here's what they do. I'd say, well, next week I want that all written down, nice and neat, so it can be presented. And it never got written down by either one of them. He was the adult that knew how to set up a company, knew where it could go. He had the insight. I said, well, I'll take a shot at writing a business plan. And that's when I came to the conclusion that I could build a Fortune 500 company in less than five years. He had Apple building for an unimaginable, huge future from the very, very beginning. How is it that no one had known what he was doing? And the answer is, he didn't need for them to. He was happy to be in the background. Very early after we met him, he explained how he'd been an engineer at Fairchild, and he'd begun into marketing at Intel, and that he felt that marketing was the key to success for companies. One of the most important things that Mike Markle had taught Steve Jobs is the importance of first impressions. Mike used a funny phrase for, he called it imputing. The notion was that the, the products themselves would imply their own value by how they presented themselves. People do judge a book by its cover. It's not avoidable, they do. You know, the beautiful boxes that an iPhone comes in. You look at that box and you say, boy, there's something really, really good inside here. He taught Steve Jobs and myself marketing concepts, how to do things, but I think he had a real expertise in identifying good people. Mike really saw an important role in what he did to be polishing these people who he called diamonds in the rough. Mike acted as a father to these two and they had a very close relationship. 
I remember one instance where Steve Jobs came into the boardroom and took his shoes off and put his feet up on the, on the board table. And uh, Mike said, well, you're excused, Steve. Steve went out of the room, put his shoes back on, and um, Mike said, okay. Mike Markula was the first real businessman that Steve Jobs had ever worked with very, very closely. He was the person who was able to take that tiny little garage operation and turn it into this company that has transformed the way that we live on this planet, the way that we interact with each other, the way that we think, the way that we imagine. I can't picture anything more important than that. Mike Markle deserves almost every award that could be given. Uh, valued his friendship, uh, valued his loyalty. He's been a good friend, good friend. You know, Mike is a very modest, soft-spoken person, and I think he has an internal definition of success. I've always felt it was really important to do what I said I was going to do. If they wanted me to mow their lawn on Saturday, I was there at the appointed time to mow the lawn on Saturday. You can't fool people. Life's too short. 